Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to Gale FFTCG. I'm Sarah, your host, and today we're going to be looking at Opus 22 Lightning Rarity Review. I'm going to cover one card of each rarity in each set and let you know what I think of those cards and why I think you should definitely keep an eye out for them. Please drop a like, let me know what cards you're excited for in the comments, and if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel, and yeah. Aside from that, let's just jump straight in with 1CP Selkie. The pros, category is relevant. It's an FFCC card, means it's a lot. It's pretty searchable, it's got some cool synergies with it. Um... It's a cheap backup with a semi-decent ability. Being able to scry is a very potent skill, one we haven't seen a whole lot of in Final Fantasy, so that's kind of cool. It gives us a little bit of minor card advantage as well. Unfortunately, though, this suffers from the same amount of cons that the rest of, um, the rest of this kind of cycle of backups does. There are just better backups from older sets. Um, the weird thing about this as well is... Basically, it's it's hard, and it's not hard to articulate. There is this cycle of them that are searchable by Norse Talon. And any time a card is searchable by Norse Talon, typically that makes it pretty good, right? Um, unfortunately, in this sort of cycle, the only one that's really good on Norse Talon is the Wind one, because it can be played off of Norse Talon. Anytime you have to pitch a card for a 1 CP backup, you're effectively paying more than you have to, so you really want it to be directly on curve with what's going on. So, I I really think that the this cycle of cards is good, respectively, in their own elements, but I also don't think... Yeah, I just don't think that um, it's good in the category, which se sounds weird because that's what a, one of the pros of the card. Basically, what I'm saying is, I didn't want to choose this, but there were, weren't really many other commons that I thought was like, wow, hey, that's actually a semi-decent effect. So, yeah. Unfortunately, Selkie, you're not the card that, you know, defined the commons for me this set, certainly. However, Diana is the car is the benchmark for a good rare in a set at least at least in this set certainly um whenever i think of the rares in this set i go hey what about diana this this card is just phenomenal it's got a relevant job in warriors of darkness it has so much good context for its ability um because lightning has so many ways of cheating in um warrior of darkness i talked about knocked in a different video and knocked is obviously a very strong card um it's the flagship legend for the Warrior of Darkness ar archetype, so being able to play this on the field to draw a card is really strong. And I also think it's a better version of the 2CP Cindy that dulls something and deals damage and has haste. Because of that second line of text to dull one active job Warrior of Darkness, choose a forward and dull it. Diana can do that the turn that uh, Diana enters the field, which is super strong, so... You could play this card, maybe you cheat it in, maybe you draw a card, maybe it's in a 7-wall list, there's Al Cid that can do that, and obviously Warriors of Darkness as well. And then on top of that, you can also have it be a proactive or reactive play, depending on the situation. So I, th I think this Diana is just good in general. It's definitely better than its counterpart, Alba. Um, Alba is a little bit more specific, but Diana is just straight up good it's just a fantastic card um the only cons i think are that the first effect is pretty specific it's not just play this card draw a card but if you're cheating it in any way it's a card that's basically free out of your hand and replaces itself is pretty good i think so yeah definitely think diana will be seeing some plays it's not such a powerful card that it will you know break lightning as a whole but i think it's so powerful in its niche that there definitely won't be many cards that are better at it. Up next, we have Cloud. And this is a Limit Break card. Um, I'm not going to go over the Limit Break mechanic in these videos. Um, I've said that a few times already. But uh, the fact that this is a card that's outside of the game that you can bring in at any time from uh, effectively what is an extra deck 
is incredible. 4 CP 8K, um, limit break 2, meaning meaning it's effectively a very low cost for a limit break. Um, when Cloud enters the field, you choose one forward of cost 3 or less and break it. Um, this is wildly strong. Um, it's great anti-aggro right now because most aggro decks are running 2 and 3 drops. Um, not sure how well this will work. Um, again, only time will tell how good it will be at that role. But I think being able to always have an answer for something is just going to be good. Um, and the cons really for this is that it's limit burst. Um, special, choose one forward opponent controls, break it, cloud deals your opponent one point of damage. That's really potent, but it requires you to uh, have let cloud live a turn and also be running clouds in your actual deck. And I don't necessarily know if those two things go together. Um, obviously, I would love to be proven wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments. But I, I just don't see this being as usable as people make it. Maybe somebody will make it worthwhile. But I think that versatility is just incredible on its own. And yeah, th this card is pretty self-explanatory. I think it answers a lot of things and is pretty just all around good for what it does. And last, but certainly not least, we have Ultimecia, our legend. Um, the pros, it's a Category 8, and it's Decidia Final Fantasy. And it's a witch as well. There's a, there's a bunch of things that this is actually quite good with. Like, but unfortunately, the context around it is only reasonable. It's not insanely good context, like a lot of the cards in this set. Um... It's protection. All the cards in your break zone cannot be removed from the game by your opponent's summons or abilities. This is pretty cool, um, but it does. It's it's a bit of an investment for that to be your payoff. Um, it when Ultimisa enters the field, um, choosing a forward. If there are fifteen or more cards in your break zone, you gain control of that forward. Again, a good idea. But fifteen cards in your break zone means this card is a very specifically timed card. Which seems a bit strange. You can get this off of Griever, so maybe you play Griever early and then there's a way of sacking it. Or maybe your opponent removes it, you play Ultimecia to protect your bin. And then things happen? I don't know. I feel like this middle ability is really pretty bleh, to be honest. I, I'm not the biggest fan. See, if it said 10, this would be a legend that I would be like, this is broken. This is such a strong legend. But it just feels middling to me. Um, it's Maelstrom is actually pretty good. Um, there's enough Ultimecias that I think running a couple doesn't feel bad. Um, so being able to choose a forward it loses 10k for discarding a copy Ultimecia, that seems pretty good, and I do actually really like that. But otherwise, I think, yeah, I was a little disappointed in the Lightning Legends. I th this is definitely the better one, I think. But let me know what you think in the comments below. And with that we're at the end of this review um don't forget to drop a like let me know what cards you're excited for in the comments if you like what you see please consider subscribing have a great day and a great rest of your week